Hello everyone and welcome to another video on this channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at lights. I promised someone on the Discord that we're going to cover this topic and this is the basics of lights inside of Arnold. So if we go to the Arnold setup and we go over here to lights, you're going to see that we have six lights. Three of these lights are the ones that we use the most. This one's Aria light, Sky Dome light, and Mesh light. These other three, photometric light and physical sky, are a little bit more specific and we're not going to be using or exploring them today, but I am going to mention what they do. So photometric light, if you're doing architectural visualization, you're going to get specific shapes on the lights that's when you use this guys right here and they use something called an IES profile the light portal is when we have a light on the outside of a building and we want to make sure that more rays go into the building so that we don't have to increase the bounces as much so we use light portals kind of to guide the lights into our buildings and physical sky is just a very basic CG sky it doesn't look that good so I, I never use this so let's start with the first one which is this is gonna be this one sky dome light the sky dome light is probably the easiest one to understand it's the most basic one to use it's gonna give you a great great result so if we go to google real quick and we look for polyhaven polyhaven has a huge huge collection of hdris and hdris are this type of images there are 360 degree images at different exposures that captures the light information of the place where they were taken so for instance if i were to grab i don't know this one right here squad a school a school quad and we just download this we're going to be downloading this EXR file. It's very important that when you're using HDRIs, you use EXR files because they contain the most information for your image. So once we have this, of course, we're going to copy this and bring it all the way into our source images folder because anytime we import an image inside of Maya, it's going to be looking for it inside of the source images folder. So once we have this big thing selected right here, I'm going to go to the color options of the sky dome light and I'm going to plug in a file texture. And if we go over here and we look for our school quad right there and we hit open, this is what we get. Now, you might get this very weird effect. If this happens to you, don't worry. Even though it looks horrible here on the viewport, that doesn't mean that that's how it's going to look on the render. So let's focus our character right there. And if I hit render now, we're going to get this very, very nice results. First, of course, this thing needs to convert the texture into TX files. Arnold does this every single time. And there we go. So now what we're going to get is we're going to get at this illusion or this, uh, well, not an illusion. We're going to get this render where it looks like our character is inside of this environment. So the colors that we see, these are like warm tones and everything, the light information, it's all, all going to be reflected on top of our character. This is, I would say, the most basic thing you should be doing when you're doing renders. If you just want to do a quick, easy render to put on your portfolio or online, this is not what I recommend. I'm going to show you some more advanced stuff in just a second. But if you just want to do this, this basic sky dome light is perfect. Now, one thing that we can do, and this is very cool, is we can go to the exposure of the sky dome light and we can reduce it by using negative numbers. So if we set this to minus two, for instance, and we hit render, what's going to happen is we're going to underexpose the light a little bit more. And as you can see, we're going to get an effect that looks a little bit nicer. We don't have as much light now hitting our object, but everything else on the background looks interesting. If you don't want to see your sky dome on the image, on the render itself, you can go all the way down here and under visibility, we're going to bring the camera visibility all the way down. So now when we render, we're going to have a completely black background. So that's the first type of image that we can use or the first type of light. And it's, uh, again, a very good light. I'm going to press H here to hide it. And now I'm going to bring in the second type of light, which is the area light. The area light is the most traditional light. It's literally just an area that emits light into your character. So I'm going to position this right here on the top, something like this. Let's go for like a sort of like a front view. And there's a couple of things that we can control in this light that are going to make it really, really cool. First is the scale. So if we make the scale of this light really, really small, that means that the light source is really small and really strong. So as you can see right now, we're not seeing absolutely anything. And that's because we're working in real world scale. So if this happens to you, the most like easy solution is to just go to your area light shape and increase the exposure. You can play with the intensity of lights in two ways, intensity and exposure. If you do intensity, the progression is linear. So every number that you increase, it's going to be more light information. Exposure is exponential. So I prefer to work with exposure because you use the smaller numbers. But if you like working with intensity, that's fine. The only important thing to notice is that if you're going to be working with exposure, you need to make sure to leave intensity set to one because if intensity is set to zero, you get no light. So in this case, because I already know the number 16 is what we're going to need and if i press uh, play as you can see right here this is the render that we're going to get let's of course get a little bit closer to the character this is my resolution get which is what we're going to be rendering there we go and if we render from our camera there we go 
So as you can see, we get this very, very strong light coming from the top of the character. I want you to pay attention to the shadows of the object right now. These are very harsh, strong shadows. So the first thing you need to know about this type of lights, let's go to a perspective, is if you scale the lights, the hardness of the shadow will decrease. And now, as you can see, instead of getting these very dark shadows, we get a very soft effect. Why is this? Because the exposure, the intensity of the light is being spread into a bigger effect. So if you want to have this sort of like spotlight look where you get like very deep shadows you're gonna want to have like small lights and if you want to have a very soft more like traditional look you're gonna have a bigger shapes as well another thing that we can change right here is the shape so this light uh, shape can be changed to a disc for instance which is going to give us more of a, of a sort of spotlight effect uh we can even use a cylinder i don't use cylinders too much to be honest i normally use either quads or um what's the word or discs so let's switch to this for instance and here's another attribute that's very fun about lights and that is color temperature so color temperature allows us to change how the light looks just by turning it on you're already gonna like see a little bit of a change because instead of being this like perfect white color that we normally get we're gonna start getting something that looks a little bit nicer so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna decrease this and as you can see when we decrease this we get a warm tone to the light so the lower the temperature on this side the warmer it's gonna be and the higher the temperature the colder it's gonna be so it's a very nice natural way to control the light here inside of our scenes by just modifying the temperature of our light and you can get as you can see like this already is just one simple light and it already looks very very nice so i'm going to increase the intensity just a little bit let's say 16.5 and i want to show you something another thing that we have right here is the spread so if we make this a little bit smaller and we're like hey you know what i only want this light to be hitting in this sort of like cone right now well we can change that by modifying the spread right now the spread is spreading everywhere it's like just like flooding the whole scene so if i had like a box over here due to the direction of this light i would get some light information there if i instead bring the spread all the way down Look at how this changes. Now we're gonna get a very strong like light hitting only the top part of our character right here. If I bring this even lower, you're gonna start seeing like a cutoff point right there on the top of the head, which again is very important because if we really, really, really wanna focus our spotlight in a specific point, we're gonna be using the spread to control where that spot is gonna be. Um, the one thing that you need to keep in mind when you're seeing a spread though is that you do need to modify your exposure a little bit because otherwise the light's going to be really, really strong. So in this case, I'm lowering the exposure to make sure that things are not like overblown. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's the basic thing that you can do with area lights. Again, you can change the shape, you can change the intensity, you can change the color, and you can play around to get a very, very interesting effect. Normally, I teach you guys how to do the three-point light setup. If you want me to teach you how to do that here inside of Maya, let me know in the comments, and I'm going to be happy to record a video for that. But now let's jump to our final light. So we've already seen the first one, which was, was our sky dome light. Then we have our area light. And finally, we have something called a mesh light. So sometimes we're going to have objects inside of our scene that are going to be emitting light themselves, like the filament of a light bulb, like the headlamps of a car, like things like that that are, cannot easily be created with the lights that we just shown. And it's better if a geometry actually generates that thing. A lot of people make the mistake of adding a material to the object and using emissive uh, information to, to crank the, the strength and give it illumination, but that's a very bad way to do it because you need a lot of samples to clean it up. It's better if the engines have the access to mesh lights to use a mesh light. So for instance here, I'm gonna bring this sphere right around there and I'm gonna say Arnold lights mesh light. And what's going to happen is the sphere is going to change shapes. You're going to see that now here we got a little node that represents the sphere light. And uh, again, we can change the exposure. So we can go for, let's say, A16. And if we render now, we're going to get an object on the center of the character that's going to be generating that effect. You can see it's taking a little bit longer because I added new geometry to the scene and new effects. So I need to let the, the GPU think a little bit. Give me one sec. There we go. So as you can see, this sphere is actually like generating light and projecting it into the scene. Of course, the exposure is a little bit too intense, so let's bring it down. And I don't know, you can imagine this thing being like a magical orb. We can change the color and generate a different effect. I usually don't like using very saturated colors because you pretty much destroy everything. Um, and one very important thing about this guys right here is that you do wanna, sometimes, not always, but you do wanna make the light visible so that you can see what object is actually like generating this sort of effect. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, the fun thing about these lights is that you can combine them all. So if we were to, in this case, bring back all of the other lights right here, 
and do a render with all the three types of lights, you're going to see that we get a more much much more complex scene. We have this very intense key light coming from the top. We got this interesting glow light or mesh light coming on the center. And we also have a general like ambient from the HDRI that's filling in all of those shadows. So that's the magic of understanding how this three basic lights work together. Because if we, if we know how they work, we're going to be able to create amazing things. So this is it, my friends. If you want to check out our premium courses and support our channel, make sure to check the description. We have one course right now, but I'm working on the next one and that your support is greatly, greatly appreciated. Also, don't forget to check our Discord channels. Subscribe if you haven't and uh, leave me a comment. It's always fun to hear from you and see what you guys want me to cover next. And uh, yeah, I, I really, really hope that all of this information that I'm sharing right now is going to help you become an amazing artist. That's it for today, my friends. I'll see you back on the next one.